Let's look at a few other different issues. Uh, I know you're, you're busy today, but I do want to ask you about the story that's emerged the last few days about Live Golf Adelaide. It was a massive success in your home state. A bit of a gamble by you to get on board with Live Golf, but I noticed that tickets are back on sale and selling very quickly for the next iteration. You must be looking forward to that. Yeah, look, it was a, it was a big success and it um, didn't come without a degree of controversy, Kieran, but the simple reality is that the Australian public have been denied high quality golf tournaments for decades and they want to see the world's best golfers uh, in a nation that loves the sport and our, that was our calculation and it was a, a great success and we saw hordes of tourists come uh, from across other states to be able to experience it in Adelaide and they had a great time so we would love that to continue in the future it's it's something that has underpinned a bit of economic activity which is our main motivation for the effort and how long may that continue yeah, well, it would be good if you can establish a, a long-running arrangement, particularly once that truce is achieved between the Saudi-backed LIV mm. and the US PGA. Is that something that you ho you're hoping and planning for? Uh, the short answer is we'd, we we want to discuss that with LIV, and we're certainly open and keen to do it at the, you know, on the right price. I mean, we're not we're not gonna gonna spend. Uh, money, unless it's, we're sure it's going to deliver an appropriate economic return to the state. But certainly uh, the potential of LIV coming together with the PGA is a, is a good thing. Uh, we're monitoring it from afar. Our teams are in discussions uh, with theirs and we continue to, to collaborate and negotiate. But we've got a, a deal for the next few years that has us locked in and I uh, hope as many people as possible come across and enjoy it because I've got to say it was an extraordinary event. They put on a great show. Yep, and uh, I know golf fans around the nation loved it. Uh, just finally, the stage three tax changes, a broken promise always difficult for a politician of any stripe, state, federal or whatever. Do you think this is going to be well received by South Australians? Does it take a bit of bark off the Prime Minister along the way, though? Well, what we know is that uh, more South Australians are going to have more money in their pocket. And in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Uh, from my perspective, in a pure policy sense, not a political one, in a pure policy sense, uh, if there are more South Australians who have got the capacity to be able to confront uh, the inflation challenge with more of their own money in their pockets, uh, that's a good thing. And look, you know, the, the statutory tax cuts have had a degree of controversy a, a, attached to them the whole way through. Um, and I'm sure that this debate will continue on. Uh, but, you know, in reality, South Australians, uh, you, know, you know, thousands of South Australians are going to be the beneficiaries of this tax cut. I mean, in my view, and I've, I've spoken about this publicly uh, over the last few weeks, Kieran, uh, my view is that, you know, as a country, we do disproportionately tax uh, income more. Uh, that isn't a good thing. I mean, the very thing we want to encourage people to do the most is work hard. We say it all the time, work hard. Well, if people want to work hard, uh, they shouldn't have a disproportionate amount of their money uh, going to tax in comparison to other countries around the world where it can be adjusted for. And that's particularly true for the middle class. Uh, so this will be rolled out in due course, provided it gets through um, the parliament, and there'll be a lot of South Australians who will be grateful for it, I'm sure. South Australian Premier Peter Malinowskis, appreciate your time. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kieran.